Now, I've said all along that when it comes to challenging Joe Biden, um, our enemy is actually not hatred uh, by the media. Our enemy is indifference of the media. Why? Because sometimes if the media hates on some lefty candidate, it can have a bit of a backlash effect, and that person's numbers can go up. Uh, it doesn't happen as much on the Democratic side, but it can. On the Republican side, this happened very clearly. I mean, the more the media went after Trump, the more he went up in the polls. Republicans like had a reaction to the media that was like the opposite of what they expected. They were like, fuck you, you make us like him more. On the Democratic side, there's the potential of that there, because as long as they're talking about you, that is better than no press, right? It's like the old saying, there's no such thing as bad press. But, you know, the enemy is if some left candidate runs against Biden and the media is just mums the word, pretends like it's not happening, totally indifferent. And guess what? That's exactly what they did with Biden's left wing challengers, primarily the one who's been in the longest, Marianne Williamson. So what I'm about to show you is an astonishing clip. It is stunningly dishonest. And in a world that made sense, this would have been Joe Scarborough's last broadcast. Because if you care about factual standards, this isn't like a, a free speech question, right? It's not, a, it's not a matter of free speech, free expression versus being against those things. No, it's a matter of, can you do your job correct? Can you do your job in a basic, acceptable way? Or do you basically go on air and do journalistic malpractice on a daily basis where you lie like a rug relentlessly? So look at what Joe Scarborough says. This is unbelievable. New Hampshire is interesting this year. You don't have a Democratic race. So you have a lot of independents that aren't going to be splitting between Republican voting and Democratic voting. You don't have a Democratic race, Joe Scarborough says about New Hampshire. You don't have a Democratic race. No, Joe, you do. In fact, do you guys know that as of right now, I don't think Joe Biden is on the ballot in New Hampshire. Why? Because the DNC tried to change the rules, kick New Hampshire out of the first spot, and force South Carolina to go first, because they know Biden has an advantage in South Carolina, did really well in there last time, so they're trying to rig it by putting his good states up front to say, say, no, no, nothing to see here, nothing to see here, he's inevitable. Joe Biden's not on the ballot. You know who is on the ballot? Marianne Williamson. You know who's going to be on the ballot, or maybe already is? Dean Phillips. You know who's trying to get on the ballot? Jenk Uger. But as of right now, you have Marianne Williamson on there, on there, and maybe Dean Phillips. It might just be Marianne Williamson. He goes, there's no race there. There is no Democratic challenger there. What? He is literally just flat out erasing the existence of Marianne Williamson, Dean Phillips, and Cenk Uger, who admittedly has court cases to go through before he can actually be on the ballot, but the other two don't have to worry about that. This is just a lie. And he knows that. I'm sure we could find old clips of him mentioning Marianne when she started running. Maybe we can't. I don't know. Look, here's the thing that's happened, and I know this from behind-the-scenes stuff from people close to Marianne Williamson early on. Yeah, there were some shows on mainstream media that would have her on when it was the novelty of, oh my god, somebody's challenging Biden, maybe more will jump in. Okay, let's talk about her. So, you know, CNN, MSNBC, the other uh, outlets, they would talk about it a little bit. Then some of the outlets had her on maybe once or twice on like the second tier, or third tier shows that are more hidden in time slots nobody really cares about. But then soon thereafter, she got totally blackballed. Totally blackballed. She would have appearances scheduled, then they would get canceled. She would have speeches uh, scheduled to talk to college Democrats somewhere, then that would get canceled. They paid for the uh, voting data in certain states, then they didn't get it uh, returned to them. Why? Because there are phone calls going around behind the scenes, people with a lot of power within the Democratic Party saying, oh, if you allow this to happen, you'll never work in Democratic politics again. And so, blackballed everywhere you go. Now, I don't know the last time anybody on mainstream media has had on Marianne Williamson. The only people that would had her on every now and then was Fox News, and they only brought her on to do the divide and conquer strategy of like, we'll use you as a vessel to go after Joe Biden. But guess what? When she wouldn't play that game, when she also went after Trump and the Republicans, they said, okay, we don't want her coming on either. So there is a Democratic race, for sure, with at least Dean Phillips and Marianne Williamson, potentially maybe even with Cenk Uger, and none of them are getting any airtime at all. It is a concerted effort. They have been blackballed. They have been blackballed. Now, here's the kicker. And Marianne Williamson actually alludes to this year. So she says, it's a ver in a very real way, how dare he, talking about Joe Scarborough. Joe Scarborough knows very well that the president has opponents, yet he repeats the lie that there is no Democratic primary. I am polling higher than anyone on the GOP debate stage last night, and Scarborough would never say Trump has no opponents. When he says there are no Democratic primary opponents, he simply means no one that we like. That's exactly right. 
This person chimes in and says, what he means is that there are no serious opponents. None who has even a snowball's chance in hell of winning a primary, much less a general election. Well, gee, why do they not have a snowball's chance in hell of winning the primary election, never mind a general election? Why is that? Have you analyzed that part? You're just taking it for granted and saying it like it's some objective fact of reality, like it's baked into the laws of nature. It is not baked into the laws of nature. That was a choice by the media deciding, let's be totally indifferent, act like they don't exist, blackball them, snuff them out of existence, and then, oh, would you look at that, Biden's leading. Yeah, because a lot of people don't even know that Biden has challengers. Because the media is hiding that fact. Look, I don't care if you like these people or don't like these people who are challenging Biden. At the very least, you should argue as a matter of principle for a fair process. I'm not even saying the media has to cover them in a positive light. But for the love of God, talk to them, discuss with them, debate them, cover them, hear them out. Hear them out. You can't just decide, mm, because you're not part of the Democratic establishment, you're not a governor, you're not a senator, I can't take you seriously. <laughs> who anointed you kings and queens, to make that determination for the American people. They are refusing to do their job. It's journalistic malpractice. So Marianne responds to this person and says, given current poll numbers, the one who seems to have very little chance of winning the general election is President Biden. And it is not the job of the press to say who, who is and who is not serious. That's exactly the arrogance that gave us Trump the first time. By the way, just so you know, Marianne Williamson is being serious when she says, I'm polling higher than anybody who was on the Republican debate stage. Like, That's true. There was a poll that had DeSantis at 12%, Nikki Haley at 10%. You know what Marianne Williamson was at in the most recent poll? 14%. Now look, you could say, hey man, at this late date, that's not anywhere near enough. I agree with you. It's nothing to write home about. It's nothing to celebrate about. I wish that we were t talking about at least 43% or something like that now at this late date. But having said that, 14 is a higher number than 12 and 10. Go look at how seriously the media treated DeSantis and treats DeSantis. Go look at how seriously the media treats Nikki Haley. They act like she's the second coming of Christ. They get endless coverage. Marianne and Dean and Jenk get <laughs> bupkis, nothing, zip, nada. And it's a concerted effort. That's my point. And it's unfair, right? Look, I could live with it if these people at least got a fair hearing and then didn't win. I could live with that. And you know what? That's probably the most likely scenario to happen. If you give them a fair hearing, maybe they make a good run at it. But Biden is in a similar situation to Trump where he gets 51% of the Democratic primary vote and Marianne Williamson's up there, whatever. 23%. And then you throw in Dean with a little smaller number and Jank with a smaller number. That I mean, that's the likely scenario. But we won't know because we never even had even a somewhat fair hearing. Even a situation where they give coverage, but it's negative coverage. They're just pretending they don't exist. And I told you from the beginning, that was my biggest fear. And it came to fruition. But they're at the point now where they just lie to you. This was a bald-faced lie from Joe Scarborough. He knows Marianne's running. He knows Dean Phillips running. He knows that. He probably knows about Jank Uger. He knows that. But he's lying to you on purpose. And this is how they manufacture consent for Biden. And you know what? I hope they won't do it, but I hope they think long and hard about the position they helped get us in in this country. Because yes, Biden's got a 30% approval rating. That's lower than Jimmy Carter at this point before his re-election loss. That's lower than Trump. That's lower than Obama. That's way lower. George H.W. Bush was at 56% and he went on to lose. Biden's at 37%. They got to give him a fair hearing, and they never did. And they never did. And you know what? Even with a total media blackout, she's still polling higher, Marianne is, than Nikki Haley and Ron DeSantis in some polls. And that's just, uh, we hate Biden. If there's literally any other name, I will pick that one in a poll. That's what that is. That's what that is. So, look... The final point is this, even if you are more of the moderate variety or the centrist variety and you like the Democratic establishment and all those things, Dean Phillips is an option. He's a centrist Democrat and he happens to be not 148 years old. Shame on Joe Scarborough, but that's what they do over on MSNBC. This is what they do.
They lie to you at the behest of the Democratic establishment, and there's never been a clear example ever. Hey, y'all, do me a favor and like and subscribe. It helps out big time in the algorithm. Click the bell as well for notifications when videos drop, and watch that video on screen right now. You know you want to.